let me just tell you, if you don't want to make a change, don't look because you can't unhear and you can't unsee some of the things that you will as you do your due diligence. You know, I've seen situations escalate very quickly, innocent situations where all of a sudden you're, you're worried about being fired. I loved that organization and it hurt. I mean, I'm not, I'll just be straight up with you. Some tears were shed for quite some time ahead of, ahead of that decision. But the more I learned, and especially the more I was involved in some of those conversations at a leadership level, I, I couldn't escape the reality of, of what it was. Culture, you hear the word culture used so much. But I will tell you that there's culture in other places. And I was worried that I wouldn't find the culture I was looking for. You know, I was so, the relationships and the willingness to help. And then I go to a national meeting and I'm blown away that it feels more authentic, it feels more genuine. That was quite uh, an eye-opening experience. I think it's important to know, to just tell the audience as well that, you know, it's not the wild west out there on the independent channel. There I was blown away. Um, people were excited for us, uh, cheering us on. People were proud. They took pride that they were a part of, of this and they were happy for us. Um, Looking back, do you think there's anything that you did like prior to your move is that, that helped you have a more successful transition than others? Can you talk about what your assets were prior to your firm, what they looked like after your transition and, and what they're at today? But there is a lot of purposeful misconceptions being put you know into communications to to keep financial advisors scared of leaving to to, to keep them in their seats if i can help anyone you know, talk through it uh, you know, talk about the pros and cons i'm glad to do so because i spent three years pulling over this decision you know looking back i wish i'd have done it sooner i'm so glad i'm here uh, and i've been blessed to, to move my business over and have control of my business now but if i can help anyone i'm glad to do it because i've been where you are and uh, it's not an easy decision hey everyone thank you so much for joining the firm transitions podcast today today we have another great guest willard causey just talking about his journey to independence from a 20-year a career at edward jones for most of willard's career he truly Ed Green, but believed in the direction of Edward Jones and was even heavily involved in Edward Jones' leadership. But just like many others inside of Edward Jones or at other firms, sometimes the direction that the firm is going and the direction an advisor want to go can just be misaligned, make, making a move necessary. So this is a an ex-Edward Jones top producer story of why he left, uh, what he's gained by transitioning to independence. Uh, or the independence model over over a year ago. Willard, I really appreciate you hopping on the podcast today. Hey, hey good morning, Corey. It's good to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Willard, if you can, just please tell us a little bit about how you got in the business and, and your time at Edward Jones. I think that would be really, really helpful. Sure, absolutely. Uh, started in 2003. Um, was given an opportunity by Edward Jones, um, that knew nothing about the industry. And like so many of us that started, uh, you know, back in that time, uh, was shown the way by others and, and, uh, and really had an opportunity to learn the business and, and build a, a business one client at a time. And I want to just to set the record straight. I have no desire to say negative things about Edward Jones. Edward Jones as an organization is near and dear to my heart still, and, and likely always will be because I was provided an opportunity and blessed to take advantage of it and, uh, and glad, uh, so glad for that opportunity. Um, one client at a time, at a time built a practice and um, got involved in leadership fairly early on and served in most of the volunteer roles. And then in 2011, I uh, was asked to be a regional leader. Um, didn't even know I was in the running for it, to be honest with you. I had, had no, uh, wasn't pining for it, if you will, like so many people, it feels like today. Uh, never been too good at political games. And on my latter years there, it felt so much more that way. So um, 
2018, uh, from 2011 to 2018, served as regional leader and then was asked to be a field-based area leader from that point on and um, got to see leadership from a different perspective, got involved in different conversations um, and, and really got to, to view the, the organization uh, from a totally different angle, which uh, was enlightening. Uh, 2020, I uh, decided that I just... I needed to step away from leadership. It had been good to me, um, but things I was being asked to lead and, and, and things I was being asked to champion, I just I didn't feel like I could stand in front of a room and, and, and do that. Um, so he gracefully bowed out and thought I'd put my head down and just uh, and move on and forget it. And we'll talk about it more later, but that, that's not me. So... Um, it's uh, it was a great twenty year run and um, super thankful for it and uh, and thankfully we've been able to build on it from there. Yeah, for sure. I mean that's a lot of additional responsibility on top of building your practice as well. I mean you you, you could go in, in 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 specifics or generalities as 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 much as you want, but you know what were some of the things that you were seeing when you were in a leadership position that you know, we talked about before that, you know, you really couldn't unsee. You know, it, it's a lot of the priorities of the firm changed. Um, we were spending tremendous time focusing on things that you wondered, does this really matter? Mm -hmm. um, being told you can't do things, um, you know, I, I struggled having to tell my regional leaders we couldn't pray at some regional meeting. I'll be real candid with you. Um, I uh, There are other things I could point to. Uh, but, you know, it really came down for me to the realization that I wasn't a business owner. And my entire career, I had thought and behaved and act like a business owner. Um, you're told all along, invest in your business, invest in your practice, put money in your business, put time in your practice. And you you notice I'm saying your, 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 and you live it every day. I, I mean, this business is near and dear to my heart, okay? I never inherited any assets. I wasn't given any assets. I'm proud of that. I'm thankful for that. Uh, my organic clients are, are my clients, but really had the opportunity to see several instances where it was really clear that as much as I wanted it to be my business, as much as I wanted it to be my practice, that it wasn't. And um, you couple that with the direction of the firm and the way it was going, um, some of the priorities that were changing, that's what sparked me to start looking. And once I started looking seriously at making a change, when you see some of the things you can do, let me just tell you, if you don't want to make a change, don't look because you can't unhear and you can't unsee some of the things that you will as you do your due diligence. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, me, me knowing the whole industry and having conversations with um, Edward Jones advisor, sometimes, you know, it's, it, it's it, the, it's, it's like this at a lot of other captive firms as well. Things are kept very insular. They don't have the ability to have wholesaler meetings with other financial advisors or go on trips with other financial advisors. So when Edward Jones tells financial advisors that they own their business, you know, they 100% believe it. And I hear it on the phone when we're having, you know, conversations all the time. And in some ways, they do have more control than other firms for sure. But like you just said, Willard, like once you see things on the other side, it's, it's really, really hard to unsee. Can, can you talk about some of the things that made you kind of the alarm go off on your head that like, man, like really, I don't really think I'm as big as a, of a business owner as, as I think I am. Of course. Yes. Um, there's several scenarios, and I won't go into specifics, but having been in conversations, having been in the leadership role I was in, um, let's just stop and, and lay some of the potentials out. You're one HR cross away from being on the wrong side of the equation. 
uh, if you get on the wrong side of compliance. Um, you know, I've seen situations escalate very quickly, innocent situations where all of a sudden you're you're worried about being fired. As a business owner, the only people who fire me are my clients. So if I do my job and I do it well, I don't have that hanging over my head. And everyone thinks it never happened to you. But I've seen too many occasions where that's not the case. You know, it's a surprise. The other examples that I would give would be health related. Let's say you have a, a health event and um, you can no longer perform your duties. Someone in legal is likely making that decision based on a doctor's prognosis and diagnosis. Um, um, you know, I've seen, I've been directly, directly involved in a situation that really shook me, where it was very quickly made clear that, that there was very little obligation to this individual who had become disabled. Um, you know, in the end, actions were taken and some consideration was provided, but still nothing comparable to what the options would be if you had control of your structure. If you had a business where you had contingency planning in place and structure, um, which is what we're working to build, um, you know, this legacy that you work day in and day out to build can just evaporate very quickly when you're an employee. You've thought and behaved like a business owner your entire career. But when you're employed, when, when you are an employee, if any of these scenarios I'm mentioning come to pass, Quickly, it can be pulled away from you much more quickly. And that was that was the core of, of what pushed me to, to, to go and, and become a true business owner. Sure. Now, the one thing I didn't mention is death. Um, and Edward Jones had a fantastic plan with life insurance. So if you passed away tragically, yes, your family gets some consideration. But it's not just money for me, uh, Court. Uh, it's it's what I've built. It's my reputation. It's my brand. I don't want anyone else having having all the say over what happens to that when something happens to me. I want to work and hopefully, God willing, I'll be able to to put structure in place so that my brand and the sweat and tears and blood I've poured into this practice can live on. Hopefully that's many years from now, but um so, you know, that's, sorry to ramble, but that's that's really what got in my head and, and what really, you know, pushed me to, 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 to look elsewhere. Because I'll tell you, I bled green. You said it earlier. Um, I, uh, I loved that organization. And, you know, it's, it hurt. I mean, I'm not, I'll just be straight up with you. Some tears were shed for quite some time and ahead, of, ahead of that decision. It was a very tough decision because I didn't want to let go of that, of, of, of what I wanted it to be. But the more I learned, and especially the more I was involved in some of those conversations at a leadership level, I, I couldn't escape the reality of, of what it was. It yeah. makes sense. No, it, 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 it does for sure. And, um, most of the time when I'm having conversations with, um, advisors that are looking to move from an employee firm to some sort of independent firm, it's exactly at this point when they find out what was positioned to them as running their own business and making their own decisions, something specific winds up not coming to fruition, whether it's not teaming the way that they want to, or, marketing the way that they want to or communicating with their current clients the way that they want to whether it's you know wanting more discretion or offering a more robust investments on the on, on their clients accounts that's when they normally pick up their head and and, and are having a conversation with, with with somebody like myself you you mentioned through conversations that we've had in the past and in the beginning of this podcast that once you took a look on the other side, there were just some things that that you that that, that you couldn't unsee throughout your due diligence. 
Um, what were some of those things that that really excited you about the future when you were taking a look at other options? It's a few things I would point to. I mean, first thing I'll say is, is when you're at Jones, you you think, especially used to, not as much anymore, at least it wasn't for me, culture. You hear the word culture used so much. But I will tell you that there's culture in other places. Um, I attended the Raymond James Elevate meeting and came away just blown away at the authentic, genuine culture that was in the room. Um, and this was a meeting with 4,000 people. Um, it just it felt so much like what I remembered things being, you know, in the past. Um, you know, specifically the ability to offer your clients solutions um, and build tailored solutions, tailored solutions that fit them, that not, that not necessarily something that fits firm agenda. Um, many risk managed solutions, buffered products, uh, indexed products, um, structured products, you know, things that you're sort of taught at Jones that are evil or bad, and you 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 learn more about them. And what you realize is is there are bad examples of those in the industry, but goodness, there are fantastic examples as well, just like any other investment for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, flexibility and in, in crafting the way you 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 manage your accounts. Um, flexibility in, in how you, you build portfolios. Um, discretion and what that can allow you to do. And um, you know, the tools, this was a big thing. I can sit down with a client now in five or 10 minutes and I can show them where they are currently, what we would suggest they do, put them on the same screen and set them side by side with any metric you can dream of and ask them which is better and point and let them see the why behind my recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't do that before. Um, you know, so a lot of rambling again, I apologize, but it, it's mm -hmm. well, so many things you see, but you know, I was worried that I wouldn't find the culture I was looking for. You know, I was so the relationships and the willingness to help. And then I go to a national meeting and I'm blown away that it feels more authentic, it feels more genuine. And the relationship that you see at Raymond James when they're on the stage speaking to you and they make sure that that you know that that you're their client. Yeah. Uh, that is such a dynamic shift. You know, I am Raymond James's client. I'm an independent business owner, and Raymond James is doing everything they can do to arm me with every solution that I need, every tool that I that I need to do the best job that I can for my clients. And uh, I would say that um, that was quite uh, an eye-opening experience. That's great. And I, I think a lot of advisors have a lot of concerns when they make a move from an employee channel to independence that community isn't out there. I make the argument, and I've seen it time and time again, that the community is out there and there are people out there that are willing to support you. You just need to go out and find it. It's not forced upon you, if that makes sense. Right. If you want to be left alone, you have 100% the ability to do that. But if you want to be with a group of people that are going to share ideas and support you, I think most independent advisors' mindsets are, you know, there's plenty of business out there for everyone. You know, our, our collective ideas are going to lift us all up together. And you can always pick up the phone and someone's going to pick up and, and help you out from my experience. I don't, I don't know if you've seen the same thing. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. It, it's, I would argue that I have maybe even a larger community of, of peers that work collectively to, uh, to, to raise each other up and, and in, in our organization that we have here, which we'll talk about in a, in a bit, um, it's even more, prevalent and present. So absolutely. If you're worried about having no support, um, being on an island uh, as an independent, those are seeds that have been planted subconsciously, even potentially. 
And For sure. I can tell you, um, you need to, to work to, to do your due diligence to, to make sure you realize that it's, it doesn't have to be the case. You can if you wish, you know, no one's going to chase you down and, and make you engage. Um, but, uh, you know, it's that's that's one of those um, things that are put out there to try to plant seeds of doubts in your head. You know, once again, Edward Jones, fan, fantastic firm. And just because, you know, I, uh, a firm is a bad fit for you as an advisor does not necessarily mean it's, it's, it's a bad organization, but just going back, Willard, in terms of what we were talking about, like some investment scenes being perceived as bad. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, some of the reasons they say that at Edward Jones, a, a level one, two, three advisor that just changed industries and is focusing on building their business and isn't super knowledgeable about the markets yet, you know, maybe having those blinders in place, you know, really helps you just stay laser focused on building your business, servicing your clients, staying out of trouble. But when you get to, you know, a level five, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, like yourself, and you kind of earn your black belt as a financial advisor, just one of the frustrations that I see is that, you know, those blinders never really have the ability to come off and you want to provide this deeper level, which, which now you have the ability to do. And I know they're making some improvements on that, but once again, it's, it's, it's a good idea to see what's on the other side to compare if those, you know, enhancements are, are, are up to date yet. Absolutely. You know, it, you, you feel like whether it's, case or not you feel like uh sometimes at jones that you're in a situation where everything's rounded to the lowest common denominator so systems are in place to provide guidance to to me as a level 10 and to someone as a level new uh, and while i certainly need some guidance uh, and value it um it's a shame for solutions to not to be available just because we're having to make sure that we don't mess up with those newer advisors and have a legal issue. And many times that's what the decision's based on. Um, you know, and here's the reality. Edward Jones will continue to evolve. They always have. They've always been slower and that's, that's okay. In some cases they have kept people out of trouble. You know, they've missed some things that, that others didn't. So let's just, just you know, let's call that reality out. Um, you know, things, Things that, that I was really surprised by when I got over here is I had always thought that indexed annuities, for example, were, were bad. And fact is, is many were sold by life insurance agents to people at steak dinners that, you know, had no licensing and no oversight and had horrible surrender penalties for, for many years and were sold based on guarantees that didn't exist. Um, there are some extremely attractive index solutions out there that have no surrender penalties, that that have no downside or a lot of downside protection, big buffers, that have good upside capture rates, you know, and 100% participation rates, very client-friendly um, solutions for the client that says, look, I'm scared to death of the market but I know I need to be in a position to get some gains if the market goes up. Can you help me build some peace of mind? Because let me remind you, peace of mind is the secret piece of the puzzle that is required to be a successful investor. If you invest your client in a manner where they can't handle it when the market goes down, what do they do? If you can't talk them out of it, they, they get out. Well, and then they have made the worst mistake. If you can build peace of mind into a portfolio and help remind clients when things are bad, we did this for this reason. We've got this part of the portfolio positioned in that manner. You probably are keeping that client from making a terrible mistake. And that's our job. Our job is to, to get into the psychology of it and to help clients succeed. And I mean, there's, there's some fantastic buffered solutions, index solutions. On the annuity side, uh, Corey, I don't know if I'll ever offer another variable annuity. I really don't. And I did a bunch of them back at Jones to, to try to, again, find that peace of mind and add a little bit of security in so that I could remind clients when things weren't so good. Um, but I, I must say that 
I was very surprised at just how client friendly these solutions are when I got here and I learned more about. Them. That's great to hear. And, and thank you for giving uh, a little bit more detail on, on, on some of the things that you saw. I think that's going to be really helpful. You know, I'll, I'll expand just a little more covered calls. Covered call option strategy is as common sense of a strategy as you can get in the right situation. Um, and we have a team and home office. I can tell them what I need in just a few minutes. They've got it for me. I can show it to the client. Um, Structured notes, the ability to get a little more creative on fixed income and offer people solutions that are tied to the market in some way, but with some nice protection in place. Um, I could go on and on, you know, yeah. world class money management. Goodness gracious, there's there's several managers that I never knew existed that um, I'm kind of glad my clients didn't know they existed when I was back in at, at Edward Jones because the performance has been fantastic. I think it's important to know, to just tell the audience as well that, you know, it's not the wild west out there on the independent channel. There's very large due diligence teams at all of these firms that are heavily vetting out these different money managers. And they're saying no plenty of times to certain in, in, in investments as well. So Absolutely. Absolutely. still, still a lot of uh, muscle behind, you know, making sure you're providing good investments to your clients without ending up in trouble. Tremendous oversight. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let, 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 let's talk about, you know, day one, you're, 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 you're ready to, you're ready to transition. You know, you have the team behind you. You hear all the time that you, you need the brand in order to make a successful transition. You know, you're only going to bring, 50% of your business with you, Max, the, the alliance is with Edward Jones, um, or insert other employee firm, you know, what were your clients reactions when you moved? I was blown away. Um, people were excited for us, uh, cheering us on. We had people, you know, sending food. They knew we were working 16, hours a day or longer. Um, people were proud. They took pride that they were a part of, of this and they were happy for us. Um, you know, people were surprised. So there is a shock factor to calling someone you've dealt with for years and saying, hey, I wish I could have told you in advance, but my employment contract at Edward Jones is rigid and I respect it and I'm going to honor it. And therefore I couldn't. I wish I could have. But I've made a change and I'd like to tell you the reasons why, you know, and help you understand what I'm doing. But once you got over that shock, um, they were excited. You know, people, at least our clients, and I think this is the case, especially when you build an organic book, when you mm -hmm. haven't inherited a book, especially. Yeah. Um, they're very loyal to the person. It's my belief that if a client can be handed off one or two times by the firm, that they then do become more loyal to the brand. But if they're organically sourced relationships, especially, or if, if not, if you've just been with them a long time and have built that trust, people deal with people. People deal with, they trust people. And thankfully, um, that showed through in our results and when we transitioned because um, they were excited to join us. Looking back, do you think there's anything that you did like prior to your move, whether maybe it's five, 10 years back or, or a couple of years back or whatever it is that, that helped you have a more successful transition than others? We're going to go over your numbers in, in, in a second, but they're, they're really, really impressive. You know, there's a quote that says people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And from day one, we have led with with heart, and and our clients know that we care. Now, there's some things we can't control, but they know we'll go the extra mile, we'll stay the extra hour, we'll do whatever it takes to within our power to to help them. And that's not just me; that's my team. Um, that's that's the most important thing to me, and I feel like that really helped us. 
potentially corny as that sounds, that um, people people appreciate that. And they know that there's a lot of things out of our control. Sometimes we'll have success. Sometimes we won't. When it comes to certain investment strategies, we can't control the markets, but we can control the psychology and we can control the reality that we care about people through our actions, through our words, uh, through our efforts. So I, that's probably not going to wow anyone, but that's, that's what I would point to that I feel like helped us um, a lot during our transition. That's great to know. Thank you. Can you talk about what your assets were prior to your firm, what they looked like after your transition and, yeah. and what they're at today? So we were around 370 million in assets under care uh, when when I departed Edward Jones. Um, and when I was bound and determined that I was going to work as hard as I could humanly work to to get control of that business because it's too too sacred to me. Uh, I, I built it. Uh, over the years, one at a time, uh, we hit the 100-day mark. And on day 99, we looked at assets under care, and we were at 370. Now, nice. that doesn't mean we had a 100% retention rate. Um, it's the craziest thing happened. And I was told this would happen, but I didn't believe it. Um, in the midst of talking to people, we started finding new money. We started getting referrals we were having to politely ask for grace on contacting the referrals so we could keep contacting the clients because I had 12 financial advisors at Edward Jones working feverishly against me to try to convince clients that I was up to no good or I, so I could tell you some funny stories if you want to hear them about things that were said. But a lot, a lot of rambling to make the point that Activity brings results. So we got real dialed in to activity and calling people as hard as we could call them. And we started not only getting, hey, we want to come with you to, hey, I've got this other account over here I didn't tell you about. Or can you help my nephew? Can you help uh, my coworker? Um, and thanks be to God, you know, we when you leave and you go from 370 million to zero the next day, um, it's pretty humbling. And, and no matter how much confidence you have in your ability to move your book, it scares you to death. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was, it was a great experience, hardest I've ever worked. Um, fast forward to today, uh, it, that trend has continued. We've found so many more opportunities. Um, and we're sitting in about 475 million in assets under care today. So we've had a good year, good 15 months here uh, at, at Raymond James. And um, I would attribute a lot of that to I have even more confidence in what I can offer my clients now. Um, I'm getting opportunities I didn't get before. I'm seeing money that I don't know that I would have seen before. Um, and our tools and resources that I'm using are allowing me to be so much more effective and efficient than what I was before. So what, what, why do you think that is uh, get, getting, building your practice almost a hundred million dollars in a year during a transition? Um, obviously the, the market has been on a tear, but that's still an unbelievable amount of growth in, in any year. I mean, when you, when you look back, like, why do you think that that is? Markets have helped us some, you're correct. Um, I, I feel like we're perceived different. I mean, it's it's so odd to say, but I've had a few clients during the transition confide in me that they were thankful that I made the change. One of my largest clients told me, she said, I wish you'd have done this years ago. Um, I was never fond of the brand, but I was extremely loyal to you. And what I found is she had money that she had just refused to move to me until I came over here. So um, I don't know. Perception is real. And we we get opportunities from, from people that, for whatever reason, in this setting here, we get that 
I don't know I would have gotten in the other setting. In fact, I'm quite confident I would would not have gotten. But uh, um, I'm excited about what we can do, and I'm excited about what I feel like our ceiling can be because I feel like I've raised it tremendously by becoming a business owner, by making the change. That's amazing to hear, um, and I'm glad you said it because it's something that – I can say as a recruiter and an advisor, I'll say, yeah, okay, Corey. Uh, but to hear it from somebody that's actually done it before, I've seen it time and time again, and I've seen it at my business, the amount of referrals that I got when I was a captive recruiter for you know some of the largest independent broker dealers. And you know, now that I'm unbiased and own my own business, it's it's it, it's gone through the roof um because of perception. And I also think just because you have so many different ways to reach people and talk about how you're different, whether it's in a scenario like this, or it's, you know, having a, a, a website that truly shows how you can help. I mean, when you're at an employee firm, sometimes there's no way to differentiate you versus the guy down the street from you or the girl down the street from you. And you just have the ability to express yourself a little bit more and, and show what you're about and how you help and how you're different. Inside of captive firms, typically when an advisor leaves, you know, I, I I think a lot of times leadership makes it sound sound like the only reason an advisor leaves is for selfish reasons. It's to I'll let you elaborate, you know, a, a, a little bit more. But there is a lot of purposeful misconceptions being put you know, into communications to, to keep financial advisors scared of leaving, to, to, to keep them in their seats. And, um, I just wanted to see if, if any of that happened to you and if you can elaborate on that a little bit. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it did, it did. And, and, um, you know, these are people who are trying to retain clients at Edward Jones. So, you might have thought like an owner and acted like an owner for years and years, but uh, when you go to make a change, the, the job is to try to convince people to stay at Edward Jones. And I respect that. Uh, that was one of the reasons I departed was because the reality is, is I know they're not my clients in an employee setting. Uh, it's not my business. I wanted it to be. Uh, but some of the things they say, uh, it's, it's quite comical. Uh, you know, it's now I want to say this regional leader uh, in, in the region. Fantastic human being, one of my great friends, and he and a lot of other people were very kind, very straight up, um, honest and and did not get in the ditch at all. But of the 12 that were working my book, five of them, especially um, they got dirty. You know, they took it personally for some reason that I'd left. I couldn't tell anyone in advance. Obviously, we know why. Um, but then, you know, money is in the in the forefront, and and they take it personal, and they'll say anything uh, to try to plant a seed of doubt. And that's what it's all about: is planting seeds of doubt. Uh, they, I had one saying that I was um, selling my business, and that I was going to pawn off all my clients on other people, and to beware that I was up to no good. I had another one saying that I was way. Uh, way younger than I look. It's the first time I've ever been accused of that uh, and <laughs> that I was retiring. Um, I had them saying that I had needed money. I was taking a check because I needed money. Thankfully, I can say that's that's not the case. Yeah. Um, I didn't make the change for the money. Uh, I truly didn't. I made it for control of my business. Um, but, you know, I, I told myself early on, I can't control what they say and what they do. All I can do is control what I'm saying to my clients. I made a commitment not to engage with anyone from Edward Jones. If I got text, if I got calls, turn it off and focus on what matters. And that's the conversations with my clients. And in the midst of the conversations, I made clients, uh, I, I helped them understand what to expect. I helped them understand, you know, what they likely will hear when people call and what the motive is. Um, and reassured them that I was one phone call away and, um, and I would address anything that was said to them um, so that they could get the truth, so that they could get the whole story. Um, so it's unfortunate 
uh, it, it's, it is what it is. It's the reality. If you decide to depart, you're going to have to battle for your business. You're going to have to battle for your clients, but it's a battle worth fighting. And um, I, 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 I want to reiterate again, Edward Jones as an organization was very good to me in my, in my transition, gave me no problems. It's the human side. It's, it's some of the people and the, um, the vendettas that, that build up that, that really frustrates you. So, um, but most, ad most advisors that I speak to from a captive firm, they just have a lot of misconceptions about independence, whether those are things that they've made up on their own or that they've heard over the years inside of their organization. I, I think these are things that initially hold people back from seriously considering a move. Sure. And I just wanted to see now that you're more than 12 months into this, what were some of the things for you that potentially held you back or gave you concerns um, that you felt like, you know, that you feel like mentioning and are they true? Sure. Um, so you'll hear, Hey, it's a lot of work, you know, the HR side of it, the payroll side of it. Um, do you really want to be dealing with those things? The real estate side of it. Um, when you've got a, you know, when you've got a home office that handles all that for you. And that's a seed that's successfully planted. And to say it's no more work would be a, would be false, but it is not much more work. Um, but again, remember, I'm a person that likes, I don't, I don't leave it at the door at five and then come back in and pick it up at nine the next morning. I mean, I, I, I live this business. So I'm a business owner minded person. Some people aren't, and that's okay. Um, if being an employee at Edward Jones is not a, uh, it's not a sentence, uh, you know, an imprisonment. It's it's a pretty pretty damn good deal. For sure. And if that's what one wants, that's great. But to hesitate to seek independence out of fear around it being more work or things like that is 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 something you need to brush off and not let that keep you from from looking. You know, sometimes the fear of being on an island we talked about earlier that's a that's a myth. Um, you you get you get uh, just as much support and and attention as you as you get where you are now. Um, what else comes to mind? I, you know, it, it's it, at the end of the day, it comes down to: Do you want control over your structure, over your practice? Do you want to truly own your business? And you know, I've had people say, "Well." You know, how about disability insurance? I've heard that from a few people. Two things I'll say to that. Um, first of all, I don't know of a better disability policy than owning one's business. I don't. I've not found one yet that is that beats that. And secondly, you know, even though I'm an independent business owner with Raymond James Financial Services, I just signed up on a group disability policy that's a uh, guaranteed issue, fully portable, and I can get up to $100,000 a month of disability coverage based on my income for very reasonable rates. So the handful of people out there that I know the, have, have made that comment. Uh, you're, there are group opportunities inside of the Raymond James system, even though you're an a independent business owner. So um, that's those are some things I would point to. Thank you. I uh, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Why don't we talk a little bit about the 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 solution that you've built for financial advisors to help them make the leap to independence? Sure. As easy as possible. Sure. So I believe one of the biggest reasons I was successful. Um, was people poured into me. My first regional leader, um, I won't call names out of respect, but people that I was in those settings with, an environment was created to foster success 
to share best ideas, to, to, to help you get success as quickly as possible. And when I stepped out of leadership, I wasn't tired of leading. I was tired of what I was being told I had to be. Uh, I thought I could just get out and put my head down and, and forget about it and, and hoped maybe that would, you know, quench that thirst, if you will, or, or, or put, dismiss those frustrations, but it didn't. Um, so, you know, we've been fortunate to land in a situation here where we have been able to build a structure um, that is going to allow for independence and freedom, but, but you don't have to be alone. So um, we are putting together an organization called Four Corners Advisor Group, um, consisting of, of all independent business owners, uh, affiliating through Four Corners Advisor Group with Raymond James Financial Services. And through that, we get the benefit of the economies of scale. We, we get uh, grid benefits. We get um, resources. We get community. Uh, essentially building a region, if you will, uh, and taking the good that we we loved from that setting and that design and and eliminating the the headaches and the frustrations and the agenda, if you will, of a, of a large organization. Um, and I'm excited about it. Um, we already have twelve advisor teams, uh, um, all fairly locally, uh, managing close to to um, two billion in client assets and uh, trailing 12 revenues of approximately 10 million. So uh, uh, we're, we're proud of what we've been able to put together in a short period of time and excited about uh, where it can go. And let me be clear, this isn't something that one has to sacrifice ownership or a share of ownership of, of your individual practice. I own my business. Um, my peers that are involved with me own theirs. Um, we don't own a bit of each other's business. Uh, Four Corners Advisor Group is a is a platform that we can all bolt on to and receive benefits we could not get on our own. Mm -hmm. We've been able to put a, a, a platform together that individually we could not uh, achieve. Uh, and more importantly than anything, create an environment that we share within. And, and we make each other better. The rising tide sort of lifts all boats, if that makes sense. For sure. And I, I, I think it makes a ton of sense. And there's you know, quite a few options out there now that are firms for Edward, jo Edward Jones advisors built for Edward Jones advisors or Merrill Lynch or Morgan Stanley or whatever it is. You know, it's so valuable during the due diligence process to be able to speak to someone that can, you know, speak in the language of their old firm and translate that as easy as possible to help them understand what independence is, you know, make sure you don't make the same mistakes that you did and make sure they do all the best practices that you had during your transition and setting up your office and on an ongoing basis, there's a lot of benefits. Our goal is for every transition we do to be smoother, every one to be smoother than the last. Um, and we're seeing significant uh, uh, progress towards that. We, um, we're, we're seeing the last couple transitions that we've been involved in have just, we've learned lessons from the past and uh, applied those lessons and, and um, things are, are moving in the right direction. I'm excited about it. Um, it's something that I'm proud of. Uh, it's, it's, we had a great environment in many ways in, in our previous setting. There's no reason we can't uh, apply some of the things we've learned and, uh, and some of the synergies that we know exist and create an environment that leverages those. And I'll say this, um, we've got a situation here where, you know, you think about some, sometimes you have folks that want to go independent, but the real estate's a, a hang up or the outfitting of the office or, you know, logistics just sort of, you know, they just, they don't want to mess with it. So the easy thing, Corey, let's face it, the easy thing is what? It's to stay. Um, so we've got a situation and we're continuing to evolve a situation where, you know, 
we're, we're creating a hybrid situation where you can plug and play. So a lot of the infrastructure is already in place. Uh, you can own your practice. You can be an independent business owner. Um, we'll help you uh, get situated, help you transition. But uh, you don't have to have all of those responsibilities if you do not want your own uh, branch, if you do not want your own uh, uh, infrastructure and, 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 and such. So um, that's something that's continuing to evolve. But uh, I think we can lower the barriers to entry, if that makes sense, and take away some of the some of the concerns. And that's 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 something that uh, that we're working towards. Oddly, I want to I want to clarify one thing, too. I've not made one proactive outgoing call to advisors, obviously could not for a year. Um, but and still I am not where I'm in the business of running my practice. I people who have an interest in, in being independent, uh, we will talk to and I get two to four calls a week, two to four calls a week, unsolicited people wanting to know more, people wanting to, you know, pick our brains. We're glad to spend time with them and do that. But um, my primary uh, uh, objective here is to create an environment that my clients and my practice benefit from and creating synergies where I can learn from alongside my peers and we can all get better together. It is not to, to hire everyone I can hire uh, or, or to, I better said, I'm not hiring people. It's not to go out and find people to to join up with us. If you want to be with us and we're the right fit, great. Let's all get better together. But I say all that to make the point. Um, you know, this is this is coming together organically, and um, it's because people see the benefit in it, and people understand that that you get the right group of people together, and great things happen. And I've, I've, I've heard a lot of buzz around. I don't think we ever talked about where you're from or where I'm from. Cause you mentioned a lot of people are locally, but you and in, in Durham, North Carolina and me in Charlotte, I've, I've heard your name multiple times. as just a guy that's truly trying to do right by some of the other advisors that you're having conversations with and you're building a great reputation out there. So I, I really appreciate the time. I, I think so many advisors are going to find this. So useful. Is, is is there anything else that you want to add? Something that's extremely important to me is is there are a lot of great people at Edward Jones. Okay, a lot of great people, and we can't let a few bad apples tarnish you know that image too much. Um, some of my best friends are still there. Uh, there's been some things that have happened in my transition that have hurt. Um, there's been some people who have shown their true colors. There's been some 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 reality lessons that were are a little tough to, to, to swallow, if you will. But um, great people in general. And I am just so grateful for the 20 years that I had there. And, you know, it's a shame that some of those situations brought themselves to pass. But um, I'll sum it all up by saying if I can help anyone you know, talk through it. Uh, Know, talk about the pros and cons. I'm glad to do so because I spent three years toiling over this decision. And, um, you know, looking back, I wish I'd have done it sooner. I'm so glad I'm here. Uh, and I've been blessed to, to, to move my business over and have control of my business now. But um, if I can help anyone, I'm glad to do it because I've been where you are. And uh, it's not an easy decision. But many of the fears, many of the concerns you have, um, I think probably are, are seeds that have been planted and just talk with someone. It's me or if it's anyone else, talk with someone that's done it and uh, and, and do your due diligence. And uh, if you do nothing and you stay, it's a great thing. You know? yep. We're blessed to all be in an industry where we can help people truly make a difference in their lives, become confidants. Um, and, and really be compensated very well along the way. So it's, I feel like I'm charmed to be in this industry. Uh, I will say, uh, I'm thankful to, to be a business owner and to, to have found my path to independent stuff. It obviously suits you. So 
Con congratulations on your success and the same offer here. I've, I've helped over 200 Edward Jones advisors at this point explore their options, help make the right choice in terms of their next home. And, and my contact information is, is all over my, my YouTube channel and my podcast. And I appreciate the time and uh, really look forward to talking soon. Hey, thank you. Thank Gordon. you, Willard. Absolutely.